In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicott. Official podcast of Blunderblog.com, the home of whatever. The podcast that knows Satan what, loves you. Satan loves you when you bring small children into Movies movie theaters. With infanticide in it. <laughs> with infanticide in it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I am your host, uh, Steven. I'm Danielle. Steven, there's no air conditioning right now. We're in that. We're You're in the, the Vundamobile. Yeah. Cruising down the streets. I guess it's the name of your car, car, right? Ah. Yeah, I guess it is. Oh shoot, you just put on Thug Life again. This is just like one note of Thug Life again. Yeah. I think we're safe. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> I think we're safe. No, the Thug copyright infringement lawyers aren't going to come after us. Okay. Um, so we're leaving uh, the famous Dolphin Mall, the, the site where they famous shot. Famous if you are in Miami. They shot the film Sex Drive here. So they did? It's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, they shot Minnesota for like Dolphin Mall. <laughs> are you. Th- yeah, the interior, yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, you're always surprised. I always tell I you this am. fact. I am. You've told And you're me always fact, surprised. I feel like I forget it every time. Yeah. It's like I block it out. Yeah, watch the film Sex Drive and then come to Dolphin Mall and you're like, whoa, that's where the donut Oh my God. Is I can only exist. imagine that I'm sure those people made that film and were like, never again will we film in Miami <laughs> because I'm sure there's nothing but a, oh, bro, are you filming a movie? Oh my God. I think they shot it in like the middle when of the it was night. Clo- okay, good. Because yeah, yeah, like seriously, like there's no way. Hopefully. No, there's no way. There's no way. Too, too stupid. Too many stupid people here. That are- so, Dolphin Mall. Dolphin uh, Mall is famous if you, I guess also, if you like the movie Sex Drive. Yes. Or if you live in Miami and have any concept of, I don't know, like integrity or dignity or self or, because it's a horrible place. It's a good place. It's named after a, you know, a winning football team like the Dolphins. So. Oh, yeah. There's so- <laughs> <laughs> How can they go wrong? How can they go wrong? So we just saw Dolphin Mall. Let me start off with the end first. Okay. So... We leave. We're, we're oh my god! To He's go gonna see... start off with the end. No, because I think that's that. my favorite part. Well, okay. Let's... So we went to go see the witch, but, which is yes. a rated R film. It okay. is rated R, isn't it? Rated hard R. Okay, good. Hard rated R. But it okay. is rated R. Like I'm not yes. okay. So we went to go see the witch, which is a hard R film. It's not just a hard R film. It's a hard R art film. Okay. Yeah. So like, I'm gonna preface this. I feel, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am I am the one in the wrong, but I just feel like in this wealth of information that is the internet and like people and other people around you, you should do some research on the movies that you see, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you should be able to walk into a movie and make your own judgments and your own decisions. Um, but I just, I don't know. I feel like a lot of, especially with horror movies, a lot of times if it's not like typical Saw and that's the creepy part. Let's continue with that story. That once he goes beyond, that's the worst part. Is that's that's what they were expecting. <laughs> they were expecting saw or like something like that, or or the conjuring. That's what they were expecting. Um, I just feel like you should do some research when you go to movies and stuff like that. I just and maybe you know what? And maybe I'm wrong. And someone's gonna tell me off and tell me no. You should be able to watch a movie sight unseen with no expectations, no nothing in there, so that you like know. Surprise but of, I'm not of, uh, saying whatever. you should spoil yourself. I'm just saying that, like, maybe read a, a non-spoiler review that'll tell you this is like an art house movie or this is an action movie. You know, just do a little bit of research. Or how about so this? You have a foundation on which to make your decisions from. Or how about this? Come into a movie if you aren't going to do any research. Come into the movie with an open mind, and if you don't like it, realize that you can't just ask for a refund because you don't like a movie. How about that? So continue with your story. <laughs> yes. 
So we're leaving the theater, and we may have been the only, spoilers, the only two people in this movie. That actually wanted to see Who it. actually knew, knew what they were walking about, into, <laughs> and about. perhaps enjoyed the film. Yes. So, about, like, uh, 15 minutes into our production of... Uh, <laughs> we are having, we had a wonderful Miami movie experience, let's just yes. say that. So, 15 minutes into the movie... We hear what sounds like uh, eight-year-old children, small child, <laughs> eight-year-old children, like what we thought was sneaking Giggling. into the theater. Yes, but apparently not. No. So there were no, no, no. First, four teenagers came in, and they were no, they they came in late, and they were like, "There's nobody in here," and I was like, "Well, there are some people in here watching this movie." Like, I looked at them. They kind of were a little quiet, but they were talking, and then they left because they realized, well, this is not for us, and we snuck in here anywhere, wanted, yes. so we didn't pay for this. Let's so go see Star Wars again. How That's depressing good. the people who didn't pay for it had the good sense <laughs> to walk the fuck out than the ones who sat there like morons. This isn't worth free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> for me. Like, for me, it's not free. Like, it's not worth free 99 so I'm going to walk the fuck out. Like, my thing about it is you actually can... Um, ask for a refund sometimes in movies but you cannot wait until the, the end, end of, of the, the movie. movie you can't watch all four hours of something and go oh well I didn't like that I wanted my money back you, it's like that's like eating a hamburger and saying you didn't like the eating the entire hamburger mm -hmm. and then going I didn't like that hamburger give me a refund and the whole point of going to the movies is that you're gonna see a couple bad movies. Yeah. And if you could just get refunds for the bad movies you saw, the movie industry would be broke. Broke, because there's a lot of bad <laughs> movies. Well, there is this bad movies, practically, almost. <laughs> um, so, so, skip all this shit. There's so the kids in this come in, fucking movie. The teenagers come in, they leave. They have the good sense to leave. I think a couple of them stay, but they were mostly quiet. But then, this fucking important scene of the movie, well, it was, yeah, it was a pretty, like, intense, it was a tense scene, I will say that. All of a sudden, we hear a little kid pipe up and go, Is it the witch? <laughs> like, and I was like, Oh my God. And so Stephen quickly responded with, Yes, it is the witch, <laughs> and started laughing in like disbelief and shock yes. that somebody brought a small child. I was trying to do my best, like Mr. Rogers voice. Like, like it is the witch. <laughs> yeah, that was, I, was, I saw that. You tried. But no, it's just like, I just. I, I know there's there's always the debate like blah blah blah. I can take my kid where I want. I can do this. I can do that. But seeing these people's behavior after the movie, I was kind of like, no, I think you're just dumb. Like I, I feel that you're the you're the dummies. Like, and they sat through the whole movie, right? And I the sad part is I think it was the daughter that wanted to see it because as they walked out, I remember the mom saying something like, well, it wasn't what you expected. And I'm like, oh my god, the eight-year-old is making the film decisions? decisions for the adults. <laughs> and the decision she made is this R-rated movie called The Witch. And they said, Oakley Tokley. And I know some people think, okay, their kids are adults and they can see R-rated movies. And okay, but then the thing about that is, is if you're going to take your kid into an R-rated movie, they need to shut the fuck up. And it might have not even been right? their Am kid. I who was making noise? I don't even think it was no, their kid. No, it was their kid. I'm not sure it was their kid because I saw a smaller girl. Kid? I saw a smaller girl. Oh my god, it got. I worse. saw two smaller kids other than that girl. And see, that's my. So problem. okay, so we leave the movie. This guy's walking out like super pissed. Yeah. With what so we mad. assume is his wife and yeah. his probably daughter. eight to ten year old daughter. Yes. Okay, and he is going straight for the for ticket the booth. Ticket booth late. The man. customer service. To tell them, I demand I my want a refund. refund. I want a money. I want my money back. I want my money back. And the fucking kid is sitting there. He going, gives them a spiel like, "I didn't. I'm. I'm here from New York, and I didn't come all the way from New York that's what he said. to take my family to oh this my horrible God. film." <laughs> Why did you come? I in want New York? my money back. Wait, wait, I don't understand. Why did you come all the way from New York to see a movie? I don't get I don't, it. The, the theaters are packed. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're, they're expensive. The theaters are really busy. Um, so he had to had a layover and came over to Dolphin Mall to pop into the Cobb oh, cinema. I guess, yeah. To see how good it was. Um, so the theater employees, of course, are like, we can't do did that. you know, what movie were you watching? Was it The Witch? Yeah. Because <laughs> probably it's the, mo it's the most artsy film they have they right have now. They have right now and people are complaining, yeah. So he goes, yes, of course it was The Witch. And he goes, sorry, we don't do refunds, especially after the movie's over. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, there's nothing I can do for you. 
So the guy left, like, pissed, like yeah. super pissed, and was like, "Are you sure?" And then the second manager had to come. He's like, "No, we can't do that. You can't watch the whole. You can't eat decided, the whole cheeseburger and then ask for your money back. That's not how that works." And he very strategically decided not to have the child with him when yes, he yes, he did strategically about the R-rated film. Yes. Okay, so. I'm behind him, and as I, I saw him on the way to the ticket thing, and I was like, I, if he's going to complain about that movie, I'm going to complain I'm gonna about I'm going to complain about him at that movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Taking his child. So that's exactly what we did. As soon as he walked away, we, were we like, said, you guys are right. That guy sucks. <laughs> we said, we said, we don't, I said, I don't expect anything free. I'm just letting you know that the audience was kind of awful. Like, there, I told him, oh, no, you forgot about the old man that just yes, droned on in man. Spanish. And I, th- he, he was quiet for like five seconds because I yelled, oh, is he senile? And that made him be quiet for like about maybe five to ten seconds. And then he just kept going because I guess he didn't know what senile well, was. He English. left the movie, just kept on repeating. Este es un paquete, este es un paquete. Which basically means, like, this movie is, like, ridiculous. It's too much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's a piece of shit. He but, just like, talked like, when whatever. he talked through the whole movie. Yes. Well, he, he gave talked- up on the way. He was... Everyone was really quiet, but then you could see the audience who, giving, yeah. who, who weren't smart enough to walk out on something they didn't like. Yes. They just gave up on it in the I'm theater and ruined you, it for everyone else. Yeah, and that's my thing. I am not saying you have to like every movie you see, but you sh- if, if you're going to stay, you need to be quiet because somebody else is trying to watch it. When we fucking went to go see Tinker Tailor Soldier Splay, which I really fucking didn't like because it was boring and both Derek and Steven fell asleep <laughs> and began to snore, I promptly said, get the fuck up, and we left. <laughs> Left because I didn't want to ruin it. And that I didn't audience, through, I didn't snore through the whole movie. That audience was, was I walked, I left. that audience was pin drop quiet. All right, everybody else around us was fucking into that movie. <laughs> we were the only ones that were like, God damn it, what the fuck is this? Why is he telling this half an hour story about following this random lady? Like, so, like, <laughs> so we walked out, but we left. We love you, Gary Oldman. Though, I'm sorry. We love you, Gary Oldman, but we left. Okay, and maybe we were not smart enough to enjoy that movie. Maybe we did try to give it a try. In that moment, we were not smart enough. We left though. We didn't bother people. We didn't talk to the movie. We left. And we actually did get our money back because we left in the middle of the movie. <laughs> and that's how that works. So, like, this idiot man fucking sat in his. You know why he sat through it? Because he kept hoping that it was just gonna turn into an orgy of witchy violence. Oh, he wants or, to see like, boobs or something. Or, like, goosebumps. He saw lots of boobs. There were a ton of titties in that movie. No, but he wants to see the underage girl's boobs, though. I, yeah, you think? I don't trust that's that guy. possible. No, he's, he's a pervert. Yeah, now he's a pervert. <laughs> he's a <slave. laughs> We'll defame his character further. Oh Jesus no, so the best Lord. part was so the we, old senile we, man droning on. Okay. Then this guy with his kid. Then some people four people left. So we're at the counter, we yeah. tell them these people suck. There was kids in this rated There were our kids film. in rated our film. There were people talking the entire time. And you know what they did? They gave us two free tickets to another movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as we were walking out. The guy is still outside. Steven couldn't help him. Incensed though. with his family. He was. Well, he asked me a question. <laughs> he did. Well, you couldn't help yourself. You should have ignored uh, him. So, the, as I'm walking out, the guy turns to me. So, did you goes, guys get a refund? Did you guys get a refund? And I just looked at him smugly and I said, free tickets. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he attempted to walk back into the theater, but then he's like, fuck it. And he left. But that's what you get. He asked me, and I said, no, we did not get a refund, because it was the truth. We did not get a refund. We got free tickets to another movie. I guess he felt that he didn't want free tickets to another movie, because... Because he's going back to New York. But but... once again, you cannot say, I didn't like this movie. Give me free tickets. That's not how this works. You, the etiquette... I'm sorry, I need to start teaching a class to... A huge swath of Americans And I know whatever Someone's gonna call me a pretentious bitch I really don't give a fuck Here's how I feel I feel you should have movie etiquette Try not to talk for the entire movie Try not to be obnoxious And upstage the movie Because I didn't pay $11 to hear you talk Try not to bring small children To inappropriate films And if you do bring them They need to be quiet because you know what? You're right. Maybe your eight year old can and, handle babies yeah. getting fucking smushed into paste sure. and covered on women's naked bodies and people being gored by goats. Yeah. But that means they then they're old enough then to if they're handling that then they're old enough to be quiet. 
That's how I feel about it. And I'm not saying I think kids can handle R rated movies. You just gotta know what R rated movie what to R-rated show movie what type of what kid kind you have. Of child. And like I said, they need to be quiet. If you are old enough to go to an R rated movie, you're old enough to know not to fucking talk at the theater. It is my number one pet peeve. It is why Alamo Draft House is so popular because this is an entire theater based around the idea that if you talk or text, you get kicked the fuck out. Shut up. Why can't you shut up for an hour? How hard is it? I never stop talking when I'm not in a movie, but I can <laughs> shut up for an hour when I go to fucking see something. God damn it. I'm a goddamn big mouth. I can keep my mouth shut for an hour and a half. It's ridiculous. Like, it's so stupid. It frustrates me to no end. And I hate people that defend it. They're like, people have a right to enjoy a movie the way, the way they want to. Okay, then enjoy it at the fucking, at your house. At your house. You can enjoy them however you want to, as long as it doesn't affect other, other people. people's experience. And if it way. does affect other people's experiences, then you should deal with the consequences of that. If you're sitting here on your cell phone blaring lights at me, talking, fucking being obnoxious and going like, nah, 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 I don't understand. Oh, and I hate those people that talk to the movie because they don't understand it and they're asking their friends questions. I like, I'm like, first of all, you should probably <laughs> shut up so that you could understand the movie. Second of all, what is it? We went to go see Terminator Genesis. That movie is not it's not math. It's not. It's not a, a algebra. Okay. It's not fucking. It's not hard. The movie's not hard. And there were two people sitting behind us that were like, "What's happening? What about time travel?" And I literally, I had to say out loud, "I guess they're too stupid to understand the movie, so they keep talking to each other," which caused them to promptly be quiet. Because it's like, are you fucking serious? You don't understand the movie, so you're gonna talk to the movie and try to ask your friend who also hasn't seen the movie. Full disclosure. <laughs> like, I saw Terminator 2 when I was 8 years old. They weren't 8 and years old. I know, they were 14. But when I was 8 years old, and I understood the plot totally, <laughs> and, and I didn't talk to the fucking movie. That makes them it makes it even worse, because they were older than 14, they were like 16, 17 Maybe what we old. should do, okay? Is have our own no, movie theater. Is, well, that too. But, you know, like, maybe for the old people, they're fucked. They're never going to figure it out. The people who are assholes now at movies, like we're never are gonna, never gonna change. They're, yeah. they're too old now. But if we get the youth right, if we start training, we start campaigns. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, shut the fuck up, kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if STFU we STFU incorporate. If we like teach movie theater etiquette to like Younger eight children. to fourteen year olds, then maybe, just maybe, there's hope for the future. There'll be hope for the theater going. Look, future. people have always talked to movie theaters. It's just that I think, especially in this climate, I feel like there's so much more of an acceptance of it now you know what i mean like i don't know it just it just really feels like if somebody's determined to ruin the movie experience for other people they don't care and and my thing about it is is that like it's ter- it's terrifying because they're if you if you talk to them or tell them to shut up they might be the crazy person with a gun that wants to shoot you or something like that like how, how the fuck am i supposed to live my life and i still enjoy the movie going experience and this is one of those things and i'm going to tell you this right now movie producers you want to th- you movie producers movie theater goers you want to know why people aren't getting their butts into seats it's not just streaming too it's the fact that people are so inconsiderate at the movie theater the movie theater experience is ruined why do you think niche theaters have gotten so popular why do you think it's like a niche theater like drive-in movies and fucking Alamo Draft House and all these theaters have gotten so popular. One, yes, because they have delicious food and alcohol, but two, because they also adopt this policy of don't fucking, like, disturb other people when they're trying to enjoy movies. There's a time and a place. You know what I mean? There's a time and a place. That's all. But anyway, The Witch. Well, we'll get back to our review of The Witch. Oh, no, we have to pause it. After a commercial break. For our sponsors. Pause it for a commercial break. I know, but you know. For our sponsors, our delicious sponsors. Yeah, our you know, self-sponsored goodness. Can we have a sponsor that hates people talking? Alamo Draft House, come and be our sponsor. We hate when people talk at the movie theater. Yeah. What the? Oh my god. It's possessed. The gate's possessed. Excuse me. Um, welcome to the casting agency. I am, uh, we're, we're casting for a new uh, spokesperson for uh, Bundablog.com and uh, we're, we're looking for someone who's perhaps uh, a duck American. Can uh, you do a good duck voice? What's your duck? Come on, what do you got? 
quack quack. That's the worst duck I ever heard. <laughs> quack quack. <coughs> oh, you're sick. Yes. I understand. This duck is sick. He needs to spill a podcast. You might have the bird flu. <laughs> oh no. Uh oh wait, here comes a professional. Quack! I can't do a duck noise. Why did I? Why did I throw myself up for failure by asking for a duck when I can't do a duck noise? You know what? We'll just we'll just stick with Steven and Danielle, I guess, for now. Okay, casting agent over. So we're back. What a tremendous commercial break! Thank the maker for them. The witch. Directed by Robert Eggers, yeah. um, is a film you can see in the multi- in the in the in the cinemas. In the, the multiple. I was gonna say like the the multiplexes, but the multiplex. who the fuck ever calls anything a multiplex, multiplex anymore? Nobody. Because that's an Nobody. old term that you don't use anymore. Nobody. You don't use that term anymore. It's like you know what I wish though. I know it's like a famous thing or whatever, mm-hmm. but and this is totally a derailment. But in Terminator 2, when they go to the arcade, and they're like, let's all go to the Galleria. We're going to the Galleria? Yeah, yeah let's go to the Galleria. Uh-huh. Like that is always, to me, that's cool. Yeah, but that's we because there was a the giant Galleria. mall in L.A. called the Galleria that was, like, a big deal. Like, that was a reason for that. Like, you, the Galleria was, like, it. Like, you went to the Galleria, it was, like, a big deal. Just the Galleria has a nice ring to it. it has, like, a very, yeah, like, of course, good, because it was a giant mall that everybody name. went to. Like, when mall culture was in its, like, top... You know the the height of the the height of the heights. It's like going to Galleria, man. It's a big deal. Like even in um, Clueless, they have the Galleria featured in that movie. Like going shopping was like, oh my god, the mall was like her mecca, and the Galleria was like her mecca mall. Yeah, they should do a mixtape that's just all the famous scenes in the Galleria. <laughs> they should. You should well, do it. You should do such a thing. Well, the do some mixtape. research. Put it together, a Galleria mixtape. I wonder what the, I wonder what the, the mall Galleria. from Superbad was. I don't know. It might have been. I hope we're getting it right. The Galleria was in LA. We're like, I'm not crazy. And I think it's, yeah, it's there. <laughs> Raises his eyebrows unknowingly. <laughs> Crap, we fail at this. The Galleria, guys. It's like, yeah, it was in Hollywood or some shit. It was where the famous people were. Clueless in LA and yeah. Stuff like that. You know what? Speaking of um, asides, whenever I think about Clueless now, I think about driving in Miami and how, remember, there was like one scene where like her dad's like, come home in 20 minutes and she's like am I take longer because she's not in LA she's like out in the valley and he's like everywhere in LA takes 20 minutes and I was like man that sucks and then now everywhere in Miami takes at least 20 minutes to get anywhere yeah. so like we've become the LA of the east coast we're LA junior we're LA junior everywhere takes at least 20 minutes to get anywhere sometimes longer I'm sure New York takes even longer. I, I'm sure, right, all the obnoxious New Yorkers, would it take even longer in New York? Because they always want to claim, even when it's the worst thing ever, I feel like there's so many New Yorkers that just want to claim that they're, like, number one. Like, we have the worst traffic, and we have the rudest people. I'm like, oh, that's such a great thing to win at. Like, So, the Witch cool. Review may be the anti-New Yorker podcast, yes? No, it's not the anti-New Yorker <laughs> podcast. I'm just saying that, like, I'm sure New Yorkers can be like, your traffic's really worse than Miami traffic. I'm like, yeah, but you don't. Like, people aren't actively trying to murder you. Like, I mean, I'm pretty sure New York drivers are rude, but, like, Miami drivers are, like, they're trying to run you down at 60 miles an hour. And, and if you get hit, they're like, ah, oh, well, I mean, you shouldn't have been in my way while I was trying to do an illegal left at 75 miles an hour. So, back to the witch. So, as we told you, you know, our theatrical experience watching the witch was subpar. Yes. But uh, the least. movie was not subpar. The movie was pretty good. Um, it was really the the genius juxtaposition of this very formal language, which sort of took you off of your regular horror movie, mm-hmm. you know, game, and then the strict uh, period setting um, also took you out of you know the regular horror movie tropes that you're used to. Yes. And then they, you know, they weaved in some classic uh, horror and fairy tale themes, you know, by having this dreadful, you know... uh, Usage of red, the color red in the movie, in certain, like, aspects that were so, you know, so stark compared to everybody else's, like, totally colorless, like, clothing, and, like, the backdrop was colorless, and, like... And, um, you know what, the thing that I liked, kind of liked about it is I was, I was thinking about it, is that even though it was so archaic, like, everything was archaic about it, the more I think about it, the more I kind of feel like it didn't feel like, and 
I guess maybe that's the problem that some people who didn't enjoy the movie had is that they felt antiquated to them if they couldn't get in touch with the characters. But I actually really wanted to try, and I actually felt that if you if you listened and if you felt their their real plights, that I felt I felt very connected to the characters. I felt like even though it was a very antiquated setting and archaic, and they use archaic language, I still felt kind of very like I felt sympathetic with the characters I felt I felt their problems were very modern problems the idea of being alone, alone yeah. and and kind of like you know and, and even stuck with your family stuck with your family and then like some of the sharing kind of, a small space and... yeah and then like some of the you know the issues were like family yeah, family conflict lying you know insecurities that's that's something that kind of translates but um I think what they really wanted what the director really wanted from this movie was that, and I think that's one of the reasons why, and I was reading a couple of uh, reviews saying this, and I, I actually was watching it and kind of thinking about this as I was watching the movie. If you don't really have a fear of God, you don't understand why this is scary. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you get cre- like Like, watching the movie, I got creeped out, obviously, by certain scenes. I was like, man, what the fuck's wrong with this person? Like, oh my god, that's creepy. But, like, I think it's very difficult in our modern sensibilities that we're so secular now to really understand what it is to be afraid of damnation. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And there are some people who are obviously still extremely afraid of damnation. And if they watch this movie, they'd probably be like, woo! They have a heart attack. Yeah, but like, you know, it, it really is like, you know, people have to understand that when the Puritans came over, they left because they were persecuted for their beliefs. I mean, they're either they were chased out of England and, and a lot of places. And the reason why they were chased out is because they believed in the literal devil. Like, the devil was a person, was a man with a tail and horns and he was coming to kill you and you anything you did Zena chill sorry anything you did was going to send you to hell they believed in hell as as a literal place like even in the movie and I I guess if you want to get into some spoilers because it's kind of difficult to um, spoilers spoilers these are the spoilers 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 black feel it black feel it (laughs) Steven's been very um of Black Phillip. <laughs> he's been freaking me out in the toilet, like, Black Phillip! And I'm like, stop doing that. And he's been like, Black Phillip, Black Phillip. Damn. I made a covenant. Yeah. Um, I want to make it my ringtone. Yeah, Black Phillip, Black Phillip. Yeah. But, um... So, they, they believed in a very literal... They believed in a literal hell. So, hell. like, if you well, want to get into... I remember when we were watching the movie, there's the part after they take the baby, Samuel... Yeah. That you're like, why the hell didn't they baptize their baby if it was such a big deal that they needed well, to baptize yeah, their baby? Well, I wanted to get into how tragic yeah. it was. The, well, maybe that's because they couldn't get, get to someone to do so. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, if you are extremely religious, you believe in a literal hell. You believe a priest has to baptize your child. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so, obviously, they were ostracized maybe before they could get time to do that. And they didn't get a chance to do it. So, that's one of the first things I found tragic was that... They believed their baby was damned. Like, they had this horrible... It wasn't just the fact that she lost her baby. She it lost was her the damned fact baby. She lost her baby, and her baby was damned to hell. She believed that he was wandering in this in-between world, and he was stuck. Mm. And he was never going to get out. How horrible as a parent to believe in that. And, and what's interesting is that later on, she does say how it shook her faith. And I think that's because any parent, like, if you all of a sudden you face the tragic loss of a child and then your religion is telling you, well, because you didn't toss some water on your baby's head and say a prayer over it, it's going to hell. This innocent baby that has, like, absolutely nothing, nothing to do, you know, with anything, this baby. But it's not, but no one is innocent because we're all born in sin, so we're all going to hell. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. Like, that's crazy. That's a that's a crazy thought. And I'm sorry. Some dude ate an apple a long time ago. It, a woman. Yeah, a woman, some woman and a dude yeah. ate an apple a long time ago. We're all damned to hell. Like, that's a very, like, when you're actually faced with the reality of what that kind of loss means, that shakes your faith. That That's foundation shaking. Like, it's like your baby died and you have to be like, well, he's in hell, so fuck that baby. Let me make another one. Like, what the hell? But, um, so yeah, so like that, that's definitely like, so that kind of got me thinking about this idea that like, I think that you really have to put yourself in the mindset of these characters. Like while the family drama is something that's very modern, the actual fear of the devil is something that's very old. And you really have to 
take a second to kind of go, what would it be like to be terrified of a literal damnation? Of, like, going to hell and being fucking doomed and never being able to come back. And the Satan is real and he's breathing down your neck every five fucking seconds. He's just chilling in the woods. <laughs> oh like, the, to, to every... You know what I mean? It's a constant terrifying idea that they had in their minds that never went away. And this is why they would kill you know what I mean and I mean obviously a lot of you know we can talk about are humans just programmed to be have like anxiety like we, we just invent anxiety and we don't have anxiety well like, I mean that's the thing is that I think part of the, the horrible tragedy of being self aware is that you know animals aren't afraid of things animals have anxiety all animals have anxiety because we are anxious of people trying to kill us every animal has got something trying to kill it and it doesn't like it but that anxiety is a justifiable anxiety because there really is someone always trying to kill you. And like, I mean, maybe as a human... A wonderful example of anxiety, Zena. <laughs> Zena's whining. She's like, why are we not getting out of the car? Um, no, but yeah, like, you know, I mean, we have, there are things that are trying to kill us. But really and truthfully, like, I think because we're self-aware, like, it makes it even worse. Because we're not even, like, afraid of the, like, the, the tangible thing that's going to murder us. Like, the bear in the woods or, like, the disease. No, we're afraid of, like, we make shit up to be afraid mm. of. Like, we're going to a magical place in the, in the under the ground that's full of fire that will fucking torture us for all eternity. Like, that's cr- like. I, I, you know, and I, I try to be very tolerant of religion. I'm, I'm agnostic. I'm not. I'm, I'm open-minded, but I'm. I don't. I don't think I believe in hell. I really don't. Don't believe in the little hell. I don't even know if I believe in little heaven. You know, I believe maybe that when we die, something nice happens to us. I would hope, but who knows? We could just die. I don't know. I'd like to think that there's something out there. I'm open-minded to it, and I'm respectful of people's religions. But at the same time, I'm respectful. But I also like, you know, some people's disbeliefs make you go question mark. What the hell? I just, I can't. <laughs> like, I. I just cannot wrap myself around the idea of being living in fear all the time. That you believe in literal Satan, like that you're just because there are people who. That's what fundamentalism is. It's the fundamental, like the Bible says this, and that's what happened. The S- Satan came. Oh my God! There was a dude with horns who was like, "Jesus, what's up? I got something to say to you." Like that's what they believe, and so it's like I just, I it's very ter. It is very hard to put yourself in that mindset if you completely like just. Or like what? What do? What are you talking about? But that, that's what this movie wants you to do. Like it really wants you to put yourself there. And it really, I think it can. Once you sympathize with the characters a little bit, it is very scary to think that there are demons and, and yeah. things destroying you from the inside out and outside in. And like I think what happens to the sun is really tragic because you can look at it two ways. Either there's Satan and there's a crazy witch in the woods. What's up? What's up? Oh, you want to pause? Yeah, let's pick this up later. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is, this is we'll come back. Cast now. We'll come back. I am going to slice off your hand now. No. Your hand will be sliced. Sneaked my hand. My special hand. Obi Wan never told you what the best podcast website is. He told me enough. He told me it was Princess of the Universe. It was not Princess of the Universe. It was Wunderblog.com. No! The only podcast website thing that shows you old serials and and has two podcasts on it. How many two? We have two podcasts? That's more than my hands. Yes, exactly. So we have the BTI. I mean, they have, not me. I'm not Darth Vader. I'm not associated. I don't have any stock in Wunderblog.com oh. at all. Um, oh, they have this awesome podcast about Big Trouble in Little China. Cue the Big Trouble in Little China music. But uh, it's you can you can hear it on Badboardy.com and use the promo code Big Trouble to save fifty percent off a Badboardy membership. What a deal! What a deal indeed. They have cool interviews with cool people on cool podcasts. Who and they interviewed so far? They have interviewed a Aaron Miskell of the Vaccine Driver Reviews and the man behind the WingKong.net and the man with the golden guns, Gerald Okamura. They are a podcast powerhouse. So great, Happy. To be reckoned with. Join me and you will see. 
how tempting it can be on this dark side of Wunderblog. But there's an even darker side to the Wunderblog that no one sees except those who have hate flowing through them. Do you wish to see them or hear them? It's very tempting. I don't know what I should do. You should subscribe to the Wundercast, the ultimate podcast about whatever they want to talk about. They do interviews with filmmakers like Lisa Hammer and Alvaro Rodriguez and local Miami filmmakers, the Mesa Brothers, as well as uh, lots of other cool conversations and topics about all things nerdy and pop culture. Where do I sign up to hear more? It's very simple. You just put your email to subscribe on wunderblog.com and you get emails every time something new pops up. It's like the easiest thing in the world. Do you also have on iTunes? Yes. We're on iTunes.com and on Stitcher. Just type in Wundercast or BTILC Podcast and you can subscribe to these things. I have one in my chest respirator so I can play all Wunderblog podcasts all the time. Whoa. And check out their sweet new album artwork for their iTunes and Stitcher. It makes them look so cool. They have like a fiery sword and stuff. That's way cooler than a red lightsaber. So, uh, so you're going to join me now? I definitely joined you, but there's only one question. Was cutting off my hand really necessary? No! I'll get a new one. Robot hand. It's awesome. even better. You can put the podcast in it. It's podcast perfect. Podcast hand. I like it. So, change of venue, Wunder fans. Yeah, sorry for the break. We are no longer in the Wundermobile cruising along. Uh, we are now in uh, the Wunda bed. <laughs> Into bed. Uh, laying Gosh. as like, um, like kings. Stop telling people how lazy we are. Like, we don't have like a studio. We have like the Vunda bed and the Vunda car. Like, like the Vunda studio. We don't have one of those yet. It's it's cool. You know, we don't want overhead. We don't want overhead. No, we gotta keep it cheap. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, but um, I think I was talking about the little boy Caleb, and how. You know, the idea of the kind of unreliable narrative in the witch. Like, it does make you question, like, is the Satanism, is it real? Are there really witches in the woods? Is there really a devil? Is Black Philip the goat really, like, the voice of Satan? Or are, is this all based off their, like, religious fears, their puritanical fears mm-hmm. manifesting into psychosis, you know? And and part of the, the, the reason why the movie's so engaging is because these questions are open throughout the movie and then it gives us spoilers sort of a definitive answer (laughs) you think you think it's definitive i mean maybe not yeah i think it's definitive i mean i think as soon as she like spoilers as soon as she floated into the air yeah you feel that that it was but that that could be but that could be okay i don't know for me here's my thing i i have a tendency and now, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's my limited, you know, this is me showing naivete, at, you know, because I, I know a lot about movies and film, but, you know, obviously there are people who know more than I do. But, like, for instance, I use a good example. Um, the movie Total Recall. People always debate that moment where they try to make him doubt his own narrative, and he they tell him everything that you've been experiencing so far is in your head, and you're really back in this place, and that nothing is yeah, the guy nothing is breaking real. Breaking a sweat, and then Arnold blows his brains out. And my thing is, is that for me, I never believed that it was all fake in his head, and that mindfuck never worked on me because. I always believe that if you see other scenes happening away from the main character, then that is proof that the stuff that's happening is real. Okay. Like, a lot of times with stuff like Fight Club, where everything is happening within the context of that main character and his point of view. Mm-hmm. So that's why you it's easy to go, oh man, the mindfuck is, this is all in his fucking head. That is easy to believe because every scene that you see... A specific character or a specific moment is seen through his eyes, perspective, yeah. his perspective, his eyes. So to me, like, that makes sense. So whenever I see a movie where it's like, well, is it or is it not? Like, okay, another example, American Psycho. But you can doubt, 
you can that narrative is always through his perspective especially since the fact that he is a narcissist the entire movie is shown through his perspective so when you start to doubt is he really a killer or is it all in his head it makes sense because there's never a scene in the movie that doesn't have him in it mm -hmm. you understand so that's why in total recall i called bullshit on the idea but, that you could excuse me let me finish my thought i'm letting you finish your thought no you're not because you're saying but in the middle of my sentence anyway it made me doubt the idea that there is this unreliable narrative and that he could be making this all up because there's moments in that movie where he's not involved in the action at all he's not even present and yet there are still characters talking around him and so it's the same thing for the witch like i i would like i do believe that this is actually supposed to be there's really fucking witches and satan and it's pretty crazy and because there are moments where and I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, because maybe all the moments happen with the characters, but then there's that one sequence with the baby where there are no characters around, and the baby is, like, being... He's gone in, like, two seconds. Yeah, and the baby's being, like, nastied up and, and mashed in with horrible... Yeah, so... Smeared all over. So that's why say. I feel, conclusively, that I feel confident to say, I think there really is Satan. And, and, that, and the thing that makes me sad, though, is that, like, the, for instance, that scene with Caleb, the little boy... Whether or not you believe, okay, it's Satan or not, like, he was sexually molested by that creepy old woman. That's awful. Yeah. That was really bad. I felt so bad for him. He His death really saddened me because you could tell that he was just trying to be, like, a God-fearing kid. He was a baby. Yeah. Like, he was a baby. And he was just trying to be a good brother, a good son, a good, you know what I mean, a good, a good caretaker. And, like, he was just swept up. You know what I mean? So, as I was going to say when I was saying but. Yeah. Total Recall mm -hmm. was made by the great Paul Verhoeven, mm -hmm. and he specifically made it so that his idea was, since it was based on Do Androids, uh, I'm not Do Androids, uh, We Can Dream It For You Wholesale, the mm -hmm. Philip K. Dick story, mm -hmm. he wanted to keep the dream aspect. So if you notice, at the end of the movie, they fade to white instead of fading to black, and everything that happens in the movie happens exactly like when they foretell it at the beginning, it happens exactly like it happens in the movie. Okay. His explanation for the reason why they cut away from Arnold and yet they're still in a dream, hypothetically, mm -hmm. is because when you're in a dream, you know things or feel things or, you know, you get plot elements in your dream through dream logic that doesn't always make sense. And you sometimes you know things, in, and you're a very vivid dreamer, so you know that inherently when you're dreaming things, there's things that you just know are happening even though it's not like you're not supposed to be present for it you know what I mean well, so you have to look at it more from like the dream logic perspective well, as opposed to vivid, like the strict when narrative I'm, when I'm vivid dreaming yes sometimes I will be other characters but I'm always like myself in those other characters like like last night I dreamt that I was Nicki Minaj but I was like myself as Nicki Minaj yeah but you had no doubt that you were Nicki Minaj I was Nicki Minaj because my body felt like Nicki Minaj's okay, body. Like but, I had Nicki Minaj's okay, so hair, and I looked like Nicki Minaj. Arnold's body. And was the thing. thing, the thing about it is, I guess I can see your perspective because the thing about lucid dreaming and vivid dreaming to me is, I'm at once. Sometimes I'm both in the first person POV and also omniscient. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm seeing things out of a character's eyes, I'm also like all over the place. So like everything, it's very weird. It's a very weird thing because you're in both places. So, like, I'm looking at another character in my dream with my with the eyes of the character that I am, even mm -hmm. if I'm not myself, but yet I am also, I see everybody in the yeah. room from, like, up above. And so that gets very, like, intense when you're dreaming so like that. So, on the front of the witch... So you're thinking... That, so, that was, so, that so was interesting story-wise. So, Paul Verhoeven's definitive answer is it is a dream. Uh, from what I remember from his director's commentary with Arnold Schwarzenegger, that he made the movie so that it is a dream. At the end, if they bullshit. fade to white, it's bullshit. there's blue skies on Mars. I think it's bullshit. Everyone's laughing. He says that's why he thinks that people are like dumb for not realizing that, that it's all a dream. That it's all a dream. I think it's bullshit. I think he's an idiot. No. Paul Verhoeven's the best. No. He's he loves he's, blood. He I loves like guts. His, he loves I don't like <laughs> making Sharon Stone uncomfortable in auditions. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, know, back man. to the front of the I witch. Don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, okay, back okay. to the witch. So, on the witch, I feel like, what, see, it was kind of tricky in the witch, mm -hmm. as far as getting the reliable, are there witches, aren't there witches, throughout because the movie. Because there's so many different characters because, to interact with it. Because, at first, you see the old haggard witch, 
with the kid, and maybe that sacrifice ritual that she did with the baby, maybe that made her young later when she seduced Caleb. Yeah, but that was an illusion. Or maybe that was just another illusion. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, once you see at the end of the movie that it's like a whole coven of witches that are like, you know, having a ceremony and stuff, then you sort of like the, the... lack of cohesion sort of starts to make sense because yeah. it was like a whole body of people conspiring to and I, I, I definitely think that there it is open to the interpretation of is it real is it not real but it does fuck with you because like for instance that terrible dream sequence with the mother where like the crow is pecking at her breast and she thinks it's her baby and but then she, and she wakes up and you're like oh it was a dream but then there's blood on her shift so it's like what happened you know what I mean like I think the crow really went there and picked at her chest you think so? That's what I'm saying. So you think everything was real? So you're take. See, that's my, my thing. But my take. Here's my situation too, is if you're putting yourself in the perspective of these people, they believe in a literal devil. So if mm-hmm. you are with these characters, the literal devil is real, that, and so that, everything is real. The, all the nightmares, all the puking and tongues and stuff like that, it's real. Like that, the real that's, devil. Stuff. That's why I thought it was interesting that. At the end of the movie, they went out on the line, and this girl embraces Satan, joins like, a coven, woo! flies into the air, because they're basically saying, by, by you know, like, by, uh, by the property of, you know, the transitive property of movies, if Satan is so real, then all the Jesus stuff they believe, too... Is also real. Is also real, and in this universe... She turned against They are her. damned. Yeah. Yeah. To begin with, because they don't have the sin, and this guy, you know, is damned because of all the bad decisions he made. And then you have, and then also you have to believe in the horrible idea that the baby is damned because by yeah. the beliefs that they didn't baptize it's a bleak the baby, movie. the baby's fucking in hell, like baby's in limbo forever, in the in between. Um, say, uh, an interesting thing is that Satanists, the Church of of the temple, the Church of Satan, has actually embraced this movie as a um, as the one of the tenets of the of Satanists in that. She, the character, um, Thomason, embraces her independence and liberation through, like, Satan. And so they're saying that this this movie is actually, they, they it's, it's part, like, because the thing about Satanism as a church, as a modern church, is that it's a lot less about, like, believing in Satan, and it's more about, like, fierce independence. They believe in independent thought completely mm-hmm. and they're very feminist in that they believe in like independent being and independent spirit and questioning things so like modern satanic temple they're very much liberal in the sense that like they just they believe in in people's autonomous bodies ruling over everything they believe like your body is your god right so like everybody's body is their god and like, and yeah, I'm, I could be, fucking shit up now. and I could be butchering that, but I'm pretty, I, I read some stuff and it's like, so everybody's body is, is like theirs and it's, it's sacred and it's holy and it's theirs. And like, that's what they believe. So that's why they're very into feminism. That's why they do a lot of stuff with like, they pick on like oppressive religious groups and they like put like satanic statues up because they're trying to show them like, you know, the, you cannot dictate to other people. Like we are believing autonomy of religion. We believe in freedom of religion. We believe in in autonomy of the female body and so they're very feminist and like you know so they loved this movie they said it was very within the tenets of satanism as they believe it and my and it's interesting to me because i guess you like if you look at thomason as a character it's like yeah like you kind of see a young girl that's sort of like stuck you know what i mean she's like she's kind of crushed she's already being crushed and like it's so interesting to see how her mother just for the simple fact that she's going through puberty and getting older, her mother, like, immediately distrusts her. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's a very... That's sad. Like, and it's... And it's, like, they talked a lot in the movie about the idea of sending her away. Like, basically, like, when she became of this certain age, it's, like, time to go off and serve another family and, like, be of use to them because you're here. Now you're just, like, competition for your mom, you know? And it's, like, okay. Oh, it's, it's... Yeah, no, it is kind of creepy. And... The thing is, is that I like to, her father, the father, um, I think Matthew was his name. I, I think that he was actually, I, I got scared at first that he was going to be like, pedophilia. like pedophilia, yeah, like have like a kind of like a pet, incestuous vibe. And so but I don't, a brother too. Yeah, but yeah. I don't, but I don't think so. I think that her father was, 
very much he loved all his children very much you know what i mean and they did talk about the idea of like they never explained why they get kicked out of the village they just said something about how his pride his his pride was his undoing and i don't know maybe he you know i like like your original idea that he didn't want to pay taxes i think that's like oh you think that was the most american like religious sentiment that i could think of that he was just a tea partier (laughs) and he didn't want to pay taxes and be part of the commonwealth because they said i said something about pride so maybe he felt like like something like he was too good to do such a thing i don't know i'm just thinking what could possibly be the reason could be that he didn't want to pay taxes on something could be that maybe they raised the tithe and he felt like it was unfair i mm-hmm. don't know like it could have been enough it could have been that the church was doing something else that he didn't believe was right and so he didn't practice it you know like maybe it had something to do with his children mm-hmm. and he didn't like it because you know that's the thing that i the one thing that i saw is and it made me sad and really feel sympathy for all these characters is that they did fiercely love each other you know what I mean? Like they they yeah, loved they were each connected, other. Yeah. They were no, they loved each other. They 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 were a family that truly loved each other. This woman loved her children. Like the death of her baby destroyed started to destroy her, and then it just got worse and worse and worse as mm-hmm. her kids, other kids started to kind of die and fall apart. And I think it's sad that she kind of put all that venom on her daughter, her eldest daughter. It's like she couldn't handle that, and I think that's like the effect of like misogyny because it's like this because it's almost like this idea that like her daughter didn't get crushed under the wheel yet like of being a woman in this time so it's like she was still kind of like free you know what i mean because she still had that innocent look about her it was just that there there was a whole like uh like a psychological uh underpinning of the movie where someone had to suffer for Mm -hmm. things going wrong Wrong. and it was always yeah Someone had to be the scapegoat. Someone had to take And it always the ended blame. up being her, being yeah. Thomason, because she was youth. And it was just the woman. way their society was. Yeah, and it was, no, and it was her burgeoning. And, and it's interesting because a lot, you know, a lot of the women that were killed in the witch trials in Salem and stuff, they were older women that were like spinsters and not a part of, mm-hmm. who, independent women. That's another thing, too, is Thomason, you could tell she was she was smart and she was you know she was very observant and she um was and she wasn't just gonna sit back and let someone yeah. else tell her her fate she like was she, a free she wanted to know what was going on in yeah. the middle of the night she wanted to stay up and find out what her parents were planning you know she didn't, she she didn't want to be out of the loop she was a free thinker she was independent and so it's like I do think that there is like the the, the feminist tenant to this movie is that this kind of this in the midst of all this is this girl and this girl the goal of everybody is that this girl kind of gets crushed into the wheelhouse and like knows her place and what's funny is that like for a while her like her dad is actually one of her bigger defenders where her mom all of a sudden is like she's a blah she's a witch and she's Mm -hmm. fucking on my kids like her dad didn't want to believe it you know what i mean like her dad was kind of the rational the, person the, um, yeah like he, even though he was like he was a moment away from being in the shining I think just, and I think hacking just, away his family I think with an he axe. just loved his yeah i think he, that yeah i was always terrified that he was just gonna go crazy i think he was just he was just trying to keep his family together i think that he was a very he took his responsibility as a caretaker extremely seriously and he felt very insecure that he had like doomed his family because i mean back in the day being ostracized from your village was like being doomed you mm-hmm. didn't have anybody mm-hmm. it was not okay There's to no live in the net. woods by yourself it's scary there are bears and native americans that weren't friendly because you came in and took their land and there was you know what i mean like there was danger there was people yeah. trying to kill you and animals trying to kill you and disease and starvation and stuff so yeah so i think that he tried to do his best but he was obviously a very flawed flawed person and you know and it's it's i don't know it's just such an interesting like i want to watch the movie again because i feel like it's such an interesting turn of events that she kind of like all this horrible stuff happened to her right Mm -hmm. her her parent you know her her mother tries her mother tries to kill her and then she has to kill her mom her her father gets gored by a goat like her what happened to the twins the twins were like the twins were taken in the middle of the night by that witch by that witch yeah she busted into the house yeah into the shack or whatever and the like took house. them and and like the baby was taken and so like her her and then her brother died in that horrible way in a horrible orgasm yeah. possession scene like and so it was kind of like 
you know, she just kind of was, after all that, I feel like she was just like, all right, fuck it. Yeah. You know, like, why would I, I don't know, it's almost like she was like, why would I want to, is this, this is living for God, why would I want to keep living like this? Because we're just getting fucked with. And so it's like. Well, the last virtue is just to die, so yeah. I guess she's a survivor. I guess. And she sold her soul to Satan, because she didn't want to live. Yeah. So, the Oscar in this movie should obviously go to Black Phillip. <laughs> For, yes, the goat. Black for uh, goring like a badass, you know, and being, you know, a great stunt performer. Of course. And then his close-up before he speaks is just so... Unnerving. Uh, unnerving and at the same time comical yeah. and at the same time, like, it's it's interesting because I felt like, you know, you get sort of ahead of the movie for a second yeah. and then you're rewarded by her... You know, following along with you, and then it leaves you like a nice moment of surprise. Is like, is this goat gonna talk back? Yeah, or is not? he not gonna talk back? And then just that it's on her f- reaction, and it's like the creepy voice. And then that guy that's like walking behind her, yeah. which was like really eerie and unnerving. And that's the thing: the movie's not. It's not sc- like I think the problem again too is that we have a very narrow definition in America, just like animation in America has a very narrow definition, and they don't they don't understand that you can make animation for adults here. The same thing with horror does not have to necessarily be a saw movie or a slasher movie a bunch or, of kids in a para- cabin or... or paranormal activity. It can be something just psychologically damaging, you know. And there are a lot of movies that are horror movies that people wouldn't think of them. What is it they said? I was reading some review that was basically like when you want to make the word horror makes a lot of like people with high brows and like you know pretentious people turn their noses up mm-hmm. so instead they use the word thriller yeah but like for instance silence of the lambs it's a horror movie it's a mm-hmm. horror movie it is it's There's, an unconventional horror movie because it's a you're talking movie. to this a monster the, the monster for the half whole the whole time but the monster's always there mm-hmm. it's a horror movie there is a monster in a in a basement he's a killer he's, there's a he monster tell you how to find the other monster he, yeah exactly there's a there's a monster with keeping a girl in a... I mean, it's scary. That movie's scary, and it has thrills, and you scream, and you get surprised, and you get... It has gore, and... It's nasty. It's a horror movie, but we call it a thriller, because that makes it more respectable. What what, what I... When I was... When I I was a kid, I always understood thriller, like... A horror movie is gonna have plenty of gore, mm -hmm. but a thriller will have just the gore necessary... Yeah, but... To so move the plot along. But that's you know the thing, I mean? at the same time, it's So like, it's like an economical... Not an economical I guess movie, but ha- a more... It's the explanation you know. of, like, what do you define as a thriller and what do you define as a horror and what do you think horror is to you? Like, if you, by all intents and purposes, this this movie is a horror movie. It's scary. Like, it's it's not, oh my god, every five seconds something jumping out at you scary, but the idea that... The idea that either this is all in their heads and they've gone fucking mad and they're killing each other and then the little boy just happened to die of exposure maybe because he ate something bad in the woods he choked on that apple because he was poisoned because he was hungry and he picked up the wrong thing you Mm -hmm. know what i mean and then he just happened to die of it um either that you know they all the poor boy died of exposure the baby the only thing that can't be explained is the baby like what happened to the baby uh, maybe a hawk came and grabbed it. A and hawk two or a, a coyote. An eagle. An eagle. They did. It they up. kept saying a coyote did it. Yeah, but no. Yeah, but, but. How do you know? Because I saw the movie and it was literally like two seconds. I she know. had three seconds and the baby was gone. Coyotes are fast. That's the thing. Is that it's kind of like no. that's the only that honestly like all the other deaths are explainable to me. Except for like like the whole moment with Caleb in the woods, he could have been having a hallucination. He may have eaten that poisoned mm-hmm. apple, like that pea that apple that he thought was an yeah. apple, and then he could have been poisoned and seeing that in his mind. And then the reason why he took off all his clothes is because he was probably feeling feverish and he was delirious. And you know, when you die of exposure, sometimes when you get cold, you actually take your clothes off because uh-huh. you start feeling like overly hot. It's weird. You can do weird things to your body when you're like feeling but out that's of sorts. Why I think but it all was the other witches, deaths are explained. That's why I mean, all the deaths are explainable except for the baby. And so that's the only the baby really does make me doubt. I'm like, well, maybe there are fucking witches mm-hmm. in the woods. But how is that bitch so fast? If she's an old lady, like man, she ran like a freaking linebacker. Like what? So the hell? witch powers are for? Yeah, that's what her witch powers if are for. You can't use your your plus two speed when necessary. <laughs> when can you? But you know, but yeah, it's like. Getting right. So, like, so the idea is, I think this movie is a horror. So either it's in their heads, and it's psychological, which 
as the sh- as you would call The Shining. You would never call The Shining a thriller. The Shining was a horror movie. But really mm-hmm. and truthfully, a lot of that movie happened in his mind, mm-hmm. in 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 the in Jack Nicholson's character's mind. A lot of his if his terror was all here, and then that was the doubt: is it all here? Is it not here? It's a little boy. You know what I mean? So a lot of that horror movie was in the of the mind, of the mind going mad. Mm-hmm. And the same thing here, if you want to look at it that, that perspective, and you would never call The Shining. Or you could take Shining at face value, and there's fucking ghosts everywhere, and there's fucking devils, and holy shit, there's creepy old ladies in bathtubs, and like, mm-hmm. you could take it at face value. And so I think that the same way I look at The Witch. It's like... You know what I'm wondering now, too? But I'm, I would never call The Shining not a horror movie. The Shining is a horror movie through and through. I, I want to see The Witch again because I want to see if now, now that I know Thomason's fate, is she going to be less... If you less see sympathetic? more signs, yeah. Less sympathetic now, this, this second time around? Maybe. Knowing her decisions? Oh, wow. Hey, look at that. Anya Taylor-Joy is a Miami, a native Miamian. The, the girl? She was born in Miami, Florida. Apparently her... Thompson, she's the youngest of six children. Uh, apparently it's pronounced Her mother Enya. is Eng- Enya? Okay. Her well, mother is Anglo-Spanish. she told Spanish. the crew on her last day of shooting. Oh, no, poor baby. <laughs> her mother is Anglo-Spanish and her father is Anglo-Argentinian. She lived her whole life between Argentina and England. She was born, okay, so she's not a native of Miami. Well, she is she a native of Miami. She was born in Miami, but she But she wasn't raised, raised in, in Miami. Miami. Yeah, the, the director, Robert Eggers, uh, specifically... Um, cast British children yeah, and British wanted, actors because he wanted that they just he, come off the boat. He wanted it to feel natural, especially with the stilted dialogue. Yeah. He wanted it to feel because they had just come off the boat. I I really like this movie. I want to give it another watch because I think it deserves it. I think that it has a very um interesting um very interesting things to say. And I do think that it has a bit of a feminist lean if you want to look at it. Uh, you know, the idea of, I guess, her coming out. But, I mean, what is it trying to say about that? Is it trying to say that, like, when you embrace your full womanhood, you're, like, a member you're of the fate? devil. You're yeah. the devil. You're yeah. the incarnate of the devil. Or is it just, like, I don't know, like, after all the tragedy, the devil's just kind of like, do you really want to keep living like this? Or do you want to fucking come hang out with me and see the world and... <laughs> enjoy yourself and deliciously you know like I don't know man like every time I watch a a thing about Satanism like all these like like I want to watch Penny Dreadful all the Satanist ladies like yeah I mean I don't want to kill people I don't want to slit people's throats and stuff like that and creepy doll collection is not really my thing but the rest of it just kind of seems kind of awesome. Like, they're having that's, fun. That's how the devil tries to trick that's you. That's how the devil tricks he you. He makes it seem cool. Your hair's awesome all the time. He makes it seem like, cool. Like, you're immortal. It's sexy. Yeah, you're pretty sexy. Like, you run around naked in the sexy. woods. Like, that sounds like a good time to me. Running around naked in the woods, dancing, floating up in the air, like, having fun. The only thing I wouldn't want to do is all the baby killing and all the people killing and stuff like that. I wouldn't want to do any of that. I'm not interested in baby killing. That's a bold statement. I'm not interested in baby killing. Uh, so I think that's a pretty good. <laughs> and some people are gonna be like, "Oh my God, pray for her, uh, Santa Cristo." So I think on the baby killing note, that's a good place to wrap <laughs> it up. Guys, I am not a Satanist. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm a Satanist. I'm not saying I'm about to go kill a baby. I never said that. I don't believe in it. And fantasize is wrong, people. I have been your host, Stephen. And I have been Danielle. And zero babies were harmed in the production of, of this, this podcast. podcast yes. uh, remember, kids, when a goat representing the devil asks you if you want to live deliciously, you say yes. Yes, you do. He might have chocolate. I wonder what Ernie Hudson would say about this. Ernie Hudson? What does he have to say about this? Because when a god asks you if you're a god, you say yes. I was going off that with my little riff. Oh, I see. That was what I was I referencing. Get, no, I didn't get it. No, when no, I, no. That was the joke. Sorry. That was a Ghostbusters reference. Oh, I get it. Seven the day. Wundercast? Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name. Yeah.